the president also talked after meeting um, with the families about someone who is on a no-fly list not being able to get their hands on a gun. Do you think that that has any chance of passage now? Well, it should. It's common sense. If you're on a terrorist list, you shouldn't be able to buy a gun. Uh, we don't let people, by the way, on a terrorist list get on an airplane. So why do we want to let them buy a gun? Now, if the law were just that, it still wouldn't have stopped Mateen. Right. So what That's I, what you've sponsored. What I added was the part that if he's been on a terrorist list before, but it's closed, when he purchases the gun, he can still purchase it, but they've got to notify the FBI mm -hmm. so that then if the FBI wants to go and talk to him again, they can. You think it'll make a difference this time? You think this one will make a difference? Because the, the vote is on Monday? The vote is on Monday. There, there, there's something different. The intensity of this 15-hour filibuster that we did, and I was early in the filibuster showing the doctor's blood-stained shoes and then his Facebook post where he talked about as blood is pouring out all over his scrubs and his shoes, he doesn't know if they're black or white, gay or straight. He and his team are just trying to save lives amidst all the screams and the groans. Uh, it was a rather compelling piece. You think so? You think it has a chance? You think it has a chance? You have the votes? You I, think? Uh, none other than Lindsey Graham called me, Republican of South Carolina today. He is introducing a version. Now, is that because he wants us to go on a Republican bill? You know, it doesn't make any difference to me. If we get to the same thing and we're talking about exactly what you and I just talked about, mm -hmm. you start it. picking up Lindsay and Susan Collins and maybe you get a few more that are up for election because, you know, 90 percent of their folks are telling them, we want you to do this. It's yeah. common sense. Are you having trouble finding places churches that will take his body or do the service? Um, when, when this first went down, that was a concern and I, and I said, my son's been in church his whole life. And let me tell you, he loved the Lord. And he, no matter what Shane did, he always asked for God's direction. What was the concern? That they wouldn't they wouldn't give him a service because he, he was gay. Because of how some churches feel about the gay community. You have a lot of questions, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. What are your questions? What happened? Why it happened? happened? And could it have been avoided? That's what keeps running through my mind, you know. Where was Shane at that given point in time? Um, I mean, I have a plethora of questions that I just, you know, I don't even share with her because I know she's, you know. For me, I don't want to know. You don't want to know why? It would hurt me too much. I'm already having nightmares thinking how he was gunned down. And I, I don't, I don't want to know the specifics of it. You know, I don't want to see... He's gone. He's not coming back. I don't want to see an autopsy report saying, well, he was shot 15 times. I don't want to see that. Mm -hmm. You know, my nightmare is already great, so I don't want to see that. Mm -hmm. It's not going to help me. For me, it's going to make it worse. For him, you know, maybe that will help him heal. That wouldn't help me. You know, because I would just keep picturing him being tortured in there. Mother's worst nightmare. Absolutely. Absolutely. Is there anger towards the person who did it? Because of my faith, I'm not going to be angry. I'm not going to just hug him and pour love out on him, but I can love him from a distance. He's gone now himself. But no, I'm not angry. Because what is that, that going to do? What is the anger going to do? It's going to eat at me too.